Okay, part two on the silver tone. I re-upped on the solder connections and just kind of adjusted some wires around, just kind of playing with it. Um, hopefully that'll do the thing, do the trick. Sorry if it was like that. So, yep. Let's see if this does anything. Okay, I got some knobs on there. Pretty sure it is in the on position. I have all the knobs for this somewhere. Like the actual knobs. All three of those, and then two white ones. I'm just going to blast it right up to that, to top voltage. Hmm. Didn't do the trick. There's still something wrong with it. Looks like we're getting all glowage back there. Even the Philco board. That's weird. <sighs> really don't know what's wrong with this thing. Uh, yeah. It's almost like there's no antenna. Thing is, is that I can hear the uh, scratchiness of the volume pot just barely. It's kind of weird. So. Guess I'll fire up the signal generator and see if I can pick that up if it's like right next to it. So it's a little bit weird because I can hear scratching it. So, oh, hear that. It's almost like the antenna is making bad connection. Maybe it's not. We're both on eight, 800 kilocycles. Ooh. Maybe I can jump something.
just tried it with this screwdriver, the metal part of it, this is insulated. That didn't do anything, but the signal generator is attached. When the signal generator is attached, it does do something. I don't, know, I don't want to shoot my equipment, but I'm going to attach it to the TRF side because I think this has a TRF in it. That's when it does a really loud thing. Maybe I'll re-up on those solder joints or something. I'm going to do that. Just turned off, or just put the variac down to zero so it will still be flowing its juice. So yeah, let me re-up on those contacts back there and see what we can do. Okay. I re-up those solder connections on the antenna which is probably the first time that that's been done since 1951 or 50. So let's plug it back into the Variac and see what happens. Also the clock works, I just found out. So it must have been running while I was using it. So yeah, let's go. Well, until I'm more experienced, I think that this one is uh, kind of a lost cause. Um, so I guess this will make it a three-part video. But don't worry, they should all be in the same upload kind of thing. Maybe. I don't know. So anyways, yeah, that should do it for now. Okay, back on the silver tone. I caught the problem. <laughs> so, remember when I said that it's important to double check? Well, I sure as heck wasn't lying. I put two 12 BA6s in there instead of a BE. <laughs> Hope that didn't wreck anything. Hopefully not. <laughs> um, that certainly probably wasn't too good for the uh, radio. So, let me, yeah, get the uh, 12 BA, or I mean BE in there. And let's power it up. I mean, I was one second away from going to antique radio forms and being oh what's this problem and there's just a tiny bit of hum um and i was probably gonna get a lot of oh you should not be an idiot and count your tubes just kidding the people on there are really nice um so yeah we installed our 12 be it clearly says 12 be6 on the bottom so maybe i was on like crack or something not actually in case anybody thinks that i'm being serious so, yeah, I guess let's get this uh, back up and working now. Let's put it all back together. Okay, it's all back screwed together. Let's plug it into the Variac. Let's bring her up. Oops. I gotta do this. I was pretty excited to get this one working, too, or at least try to see if I, this one will work, because... Um... It has an IC in it, which I thought was very cool for an IC from the 1950s, or possibly even late 1940s. So, yeah. Um, I guess this is making for a pretty lengthy video. Let's get that uh, pointer back on there. All right, Variac is on. We're just going to bring it right up. I don't think there's too much of a risk. work. Maybe not. I'm getting like the same thing.
What's what's not working now? Stumping me again, are you? Sounds like an Irishman there. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it now. Maybe if someone could just work for me. I think I got the tubes right. 12BE is before the BA. Which, as far as I'm concerned, oh. ah, this is why you double check. I switched them around. <laughs> supply is switched off so I don't really need to unplug it so let's get her apart and switch those tubes around because uh all right let's do it of course when I open it up that ground terminal will snap off oh well at least it's simple all right we got our tubes back together now it's time to get that solder point, or that uh, ground plug, and we should be good. This time I'm going to double check again, 12BA is before the BE. Let's look. Yeah, we got it. Yep, this time we got it. Interesting. Where did this come from? Tiny little IC. All right, let's solder that. On second thoughts, that's getting so short that I'm just gonna use this old power supply wire. Came from an AC adapter. I knew it was good to keep it. So yes, let's do it. I really should be wearing my uh, N95 mask. Yeah, you heard me right, I've got these. I'm being very conservative with them though. I am not using that many of them. Like, I'll maybe use one, like every two months or three months. Haven't even had to use a new one since I started, since the COVID started to hit my state. So without further ado, I guess I'll rewire this terminal again. I'll quit babbling. Done with all of my repairs. <laughs> um. Yeah, this is the end of my shop videos. Just kidding. Uh, I won't get down on myself. I'm new to the hobby. This is only like my third, no, fourth or fifth maybe, just dead to repair video. Um, so let me just get that since I know that this radio kind of likes to zap a little bit, as I found out, even with the knobs. Once I went to go set the alarm and it gave me a pretty nasty shock. In fact, the night that I had it, when I switched the radio on and it was doing the 60 hertz hum, and when I went to go switch it back off, it also gave me a pretty nasty shock. And I haven't gotten a shock since I stopped using it, which I guess I have turned it on a few times before just to see what it looks, what it looks like. Um, but yeah, let's see. All right up to 91 volts I'm standing by aha Let's see if you'll receive anything
So I guess our next problem is that dial cord. I don't want to get copyright, and that's why I turned the uh, volume down. But this unit's working. <laughs> nice. This unit kind of has an interesting story, as I'm letting it kind of get its bearings after being turned off since the 60s. Got an inter interesting style to it, and story. So I was at my normal antiques shop where I get most of my stuff. Um, this was sitting, or I should back up. Um, so I have a friend, it's YouTube user, uh, gosh, why can't I, oh yeah, Lord Squirtica. You might see him in my comment section a little bit here and there. And so he had gotten this pretty cool GE alarm clock from probably the 60s. Uh, it was a transistor alarm clock, and it looked like a car radio. I mean, just had this wonderful car-themed kind of design from it. It's like the kind of thing that you would see in like a totally 50s retro kind of scene, you know. And so he told me the place, and I was like, oh, I've been there like a couple times. I think I've just stopped in once. So I guess I'll stop in there again looking for an old alarm clock because I kind of needed one. And I found this unit, and it had this very hob-scobbled, you could say, kind of electrical job on the power cord. So I was like, oh, this thing's kind of cool. Maybe I can fix it up. And it was, I think I still have the tag on it. Yeah, I got it like a few years ago. 16 bucks. Lady running the shop, this was her dad's radio that he had when he was little. And he used to listen to all the big westerns back in the 50s on it. Um, and then I got it for free. Just, I mean... I was planning to fix it, and I told her that, and she told me the story and everything, and yeah, that was really cool. Now that I have it fixed, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a neat piece to have around. Um, yeah. Just your standard AA5. Gotta love it. Just do a little up and down the band. Seems to be quite active. Like I can hear little bands kind of passing by. Or little... It's slipping. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to restring. That'll be a nice one. I'll use this. Like, I'll actually use this radio. So it's good to have around. Thank you for watching.